Hello, everybody. Today we're going live to go over my checklist of how to create videos. I hope this will help you with creating videos. Um, hello, today we're going live to go over the checklist of how to create videos. Hopefully this will help you with creating videos. And of course the first thing on the checklist is deciding what to film and how you're planning on filming it. And of course the second thing you've got to do is go out there and actually film. Film your subject matter. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm actually doing a video for the other channel, Sane Enterprises, not Sane, I'm on Sane Enterprises, I'm doing a video for Sane Auto. And if you don't have a checklist for doing your videos, and you're planning on making a checklist, maybe knowing what my checklist is will help you out. Of course, at, at the end of this, when we're do, done going over the checklist and how to do videos, that we're going to do some shout outs here for some of the people that's been commenting on our videos here at St. Enterprises. And back to that first thing, you're going to have to decide on exactly what you're going to film and how you're going to film it. Now there are many ways to do this, but Honestly, I just like to film things that I'm interested in. Or things that I, on this channel, things that I feel like can help other people grow their channel or improve their content. And that's usually things that I struggle with myself. If there's something I'm struggling with myself, I have to go do some research on it or in the past I've had to go do research on it to learn then I figure others are having trouble with that too and they need some help with that just like I did and so I like to make videos on this channel that I wished were there when I was struggling with that point point. and sometimes I'm Sorry, my stream is going in and out, and so I'm trying to coordinate stop when it's out and then resume when it's back in. Now, whatever you're into, I hope that you're keeping your page consistently on that topic. Like, for instance, we have this whole separate page over here for helping people out with their channel and their sales and their growth and their anything to do with business because none of that really fits on our Sane Auto page. It says Sane Auto, so it should all be about automotive, cars, uh, show cars, antique classic cars, and some repairs and things like that. So those videos are going to be about that kind of stuff only. So if you do crafting and you do a certain kind of crafting like needlepoint or something like that, so you're going to want to pick some kind of subject to film that has something to do with needlepoint. And you probably got your own style of how you film that. Now when we do classic cars and show cars on St. Auto, we use several different styles.
at least a half a dozen different styles. So we may not film in the same style every time. And the situation, the opportunity that we have, which vehicle or multiple vehicles may have something to do with, with which style we film in. So you'll have to decide that. And then once all that's done, you've got to go out and actually do the filming. Now you may not have to necessarily go out to do the filming, which here on St. Enterprises, we don't have to go out to do the filming normally. But on St. Auto, we do have to go out. and Sometimes we have to travel, and so we also have the added step of going through a checklist of making sure that we have all our equipment and everything ready. And that we have any any uh, tickets or anything like that that we need to in, get into the venue where we're going to film. Or we have an arrangement with the event coordinator. Uh, every once in a while, somebody is nice enough to let us come in for free because we're doing the filming and helping out with the event and we'll, we'll, or we'll uh, announce their event ahead of time on our channel, things like that. Sometimes you can work out things like that. But all that stuff has to be done before you can film. So, and we're not even to the third step yet. And like I said, this is a very simplified set of steps. Uh, simplified so that it can be flexible to work with different types of filming and different channels. Because we have multiple channels, you may have multiple channels. And hopefully this can help people with lots of different types of channels. Muskie Hans, how are you doing? Good to see you here. We're going over a video checklist of how to do how to create videos. Good to see you in the chat. So once you've got all that taken care of and you're out there, you've done all your actual filming, then you've got to come back in with all your equipment and you've got to film an intro and an outro. And, you know, you, uh, surely you've done that before. If not, I would go look at somebody's intros and outros and try to backward engineer some of that. I could do a whole other video on intros and outros. Uh, your intro is going to be your most important because you're going to have to hook your audience within five to ten seconds. If you don't do that, you've already lost them. It doesn't matter how great your video is, they'll never see it. So then you move on to number four. Let's say you've learned all you need to learn about the intros and outros and you're doing those well. Four is you've got to take all your material, all that you filmed, everything that you filmed, and put that on your hard drive. Or at least I do with the editor that I use. It has to go on the hard drive before it can go into the editor. I can't get it to go directly from the SD card into my editing software. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Muskie Haunts. I hope you get to feeling better. Especially having to be at work and not feeling good. That's not, not good at all. So you get material into your hard drive. And then you do any Photoshopping that you want to do with your photos. Um, of course, I don't do... A lot of that but there are some times I do some photoshopping with some photo I do a mixture of film and photo in most of the videos that I do for St. Auto not so much here it's almost all film on St. Enterprises but then all that has to be transferred from the hard drive to the editing software and I mean everything I transfer everything before I start doing anything else in editing, I get all the video and all the I get all the video and all of the photos into the software first. Yes, Musky Hans, I, ha I I can relate to that. Um, I don't always forget to to uh, film an intro and outro when I'm out in the field, but man, there's so many times I, I have forgotten that. And I go to editing 
And so that's why you see a lot of my intros and outros are filmed right here with the, with the backdrop. Or I run into a situation where I try to film my intro or my outro in the field and there's just too much background noise. And, or there's um, inappropriate music or copyrighted music playing in the background, uh, things like that. So, but yeah, that would be, that is a, you know, and that brings up a really good point. If you're still in step two and you're actually filming, and you have a chance to film a really good intro and outro right there in your subject matter, then that is preferable if you can do it and if you can remember to do it. But then that's what checklists are for, isn't it? That's why we're going making a checklist. So where were we? Transferring all the stuff to the editing software. You know, and obviously I actually use this checklist when I'm editing because no matter how many hundreds of videos I've done, I still go over a checklist, and I do that with most anything I do. Um, so I've transferred everything, every piece of film, every photo that, whether I've photoshopped it or not, into the editing software. I've got it all in there. I also try to film in similar order to what I'm going to put it into the editing software so that I don't have to move things around so much in the editing software if I've filmed it in the correct order when I was out in the field. And I've got all this stuff transferred. That's when I start adding the calls to action. I'll start putting things in there like subscribe and that kind of thing. Uh, yes, Muskie Hans, issues with background noise uh, depending on weather. Yes, and wind. Wind is the biggest problem that I see with background noise and the weather is uh, especially if it's that comes and goes wind and you think that you're okay because the wind has died down and you get doing a little bit of an interview or something with somebody and they're right in the middle of it and the wind picks up again and you get back to editing and then you hear that in the editing and you're just like oh man <laughs> that can be really disappointing. Uh, but I've had several times we're filming a car or something. We've had an owner there and a really good job of explaining everything. And then I couldn't use it because of because of that. And I ended up having to, to narrate it myself. And sometimes I do a pretty good job of that. Sometimes I don't. Uh, I had one that was a particularly famous person, had a really nice car there, and he volunteered to do an interview, and we did an interview, and then there was a bunch of copyrighted and inappropriate, at the same time, music started playing in the background and ruined it. I, I see your point. Yes, Musky Hans, that is a very good point. Now, it's not just wind, but traffic noise. Uh, and, and if it has been lightly raining that day, and there's traffic nearby with that little bit of water on the road, seems to multiply the tire noise that you hear. So, yeah, you've got to take all that into account. And so, that uh, along my checklist here, You'll see that after I add the calls to actions with the su 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 asking people to subscribe and things like that, the next seventh step is I cut out any of the bad stuff. And that's what we're talking about here with the weather stuff. I mean, there's there, you can have a lot of stuff there that's good and have to cut pieces out of it because of background noise or because of somebody walking by or you know lots of things can happen <laughs> and some not so family friendly things can happen in the background and you have to cut that out you can't use that PF wrestling how are you doing I just did <laughs> Muskie Hans is also here in the house 
and, and we are going over the checklist of how to create the videos and we've gotten to number seven where we're, we cut out all that bad stuff and I have whole chunks of video and stuff that I turn the sound all the way down on because we don't want any of that background sound at all and I had already decided when I was filming that I was going to do that uh, and for various reasons because sometimes I'm at a car show and stuff they're usually playing music in the background I'm going to replace that so a lot of that I'm going to I'm going to cut all that audio out anyway I'm just going to turn it off and then I replace it with a combination of well I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because we don't do that yet we just cut all that down then we go to step number eight is sound effects and music and then if we have any engine noises and stuff things like that and this is of course talking about doing videos on Sane Auto because we wouldn't have that stuff here on Sane Enterprises how are you doing PF Wrestling? we're doing great over here we have nice weather and we are lots of uh, material for from filming and editing and we're doing a lot of editing today I'm going over the editing checklist sound effects and music okay so of course I've got music in everything I don't want any dead spots at all in the videos as far as sound is concerned which is really hard to do in live I'm working on that I'm working on putting together a background music that I know is not going to have a problem with any kind of copyright family friendly and putting that together with a really long video that I'm going to start playing in the background so that we'll have music and we'll have something going on in the background that's more interesting to make this more interesting that's a whole nother subject back to the checklist on making the videos for St. Auto and anything else that's if you've got a channel that has subject matter uh, like this I don't care if it's crafting fishing whatever it, it can work with this checklist so number nine we've got we're getting rid of all the background audio and then ten we've got visual effects and animations now I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of my videos, when it goes from video to a photo or back and forth, even the photos move a little bit. And that's because I'm using the animation in my software, which is sort of a visual effect. It depends on what, what editing software you use, whether they consider that a visual effect or an animation. And but I try to do something like that to keep everything in motion so that it stays more interesting for the audience and I'm sure you can do that with anything it doesn't have to be automotive it doesn't have to, it, it could be anything anything you film or photograph I mean if you've got something on gardening and you're doing some film of your gardening and some photographs of your plants and stuff you could do the same thing okay then I go back over the whole thing here lately I've been going back over the whole thing and I put my watermark and the community hashtag insane friends on there and this is for a couple of things a couple of reasons number one it's because I've been watching other people's videos a lot of times I watch other people's videos and if I've watched several different videos of the same type of material, they're all doing the same type of subject matter. Sometimes I get a little confused. Am I am I watching this guy's, you know, videos or am I watching this guy's videos? And if there was just a little watermark right there where I could see his channel name, I wouldn't have to scroll, you know, because sometimes I'll have it set on full screen. I wouldn't have to take it off full screen and I wouldn't have to scroll to see the channel name to say, oh yeah that's right it's this person's video 
And then if I want to do a shout out later about that video and say, hey, I saw this great video. It's it's on so and so's page. I know which page they are. And then I got to thinking, well, they may be having the same problem with me. So make it, especially if somebody is going to give you a shout out or something, make it easy for them to see that it's your video, that know that it's your video, especially if it's not a talk. But talking head video, you can see them, you know it's whose video it is. So there's no watermark here. But on these other ones with the subject matter where you're not really filming yourself, you're filming some other subject, a watermark can help. Another thing with the watermark where it can help is there's a lot of other platforms and stuff out there, and some of them, and some channels. Some people have channels where they take other people's material and they, instead of going through all this trouble like we do with the one thing after the other and spend doing all this work to make their own material, they'll just take either a whole bunch of somebody's material or take pieces here and there and put it together and they make videos that way. Well, if they're going to take your material and put it in their video and put it on their page. You want at least people to see your name and get some kind of exposure for that. Make it to where, you know, you can't stop happening, but you can make it to where you get at least name recognition advertising out of it. If you have a watermark on there, Musky Han says, my channel is 95% related to fishing in Wisconsin. Occasionally, I'll put up some other content. Okay, yeah, but 95%, that's pretty well, very good focused on the same subject matter, and that's a lot of consistency. And that is not just me that agrees with that, but a whole lot of other people that teach channel growth and stuff. Um, that is very, very good. That's very helpful to your growth to keep it focused like that. And there's there's such a huge uh, fishing community out there it, just on our pages, you know, and I can imagine if, if I had a, a fishing channel like you do, how many other people from the fishing community would be there if they, you know, if YouTube did a better job of, of promoting and helping us find each other but we're you know we're doing a pretty we're doing a better job of doing that ourselves now and so it, it's going to become a mute point and we're not even going to need to worry about whether whether uh, YouTube does a good job at that or not pretty soon because you know our community is growing and our audiences are growing as long as we keep helping each other out and look out for the people that aren't quite keeping up and help them get their numbers up and keep them in the community. Uh, the bigger we get, the bigger the community gets, the easier it's going to be. And then whether you're talking about the hashtag uh, sane community, the hashtag insane friends, um, hashtag I am a creator community, uh, Mopar community, the fishing community is it's you know we we've all been cooperating so much better lately it just it's really been a big help yeah and that's uh that's also when I get into my series of videos of how your channel right now we're on the subject of just doing the videos but I want to touch on some points on that I believe that this this community growth and stuff is at least a third of your success because before we were doing a lot of it uh, even the channels that were doing great at all their their videos and their everything you could possibly do to your channel to make it perfect uh, still were having anemic growth because it's like you can, you can, uh, even a three legged dog can get around, but a two legged dog is going to have a hard time. <laughs> and if you don't have that third leg, which is community and networking, you know, any business, whether it be a channel or a brick and mortar business, it's not going to do very well without an audience.
So we had uh, the watermark and the community watermark. Now our community watermark on St. Otto, of course, and, and here now because we've been listening to our viewers and they've been gravitating towards the hashtag insane, insane friends, insane growth, things like that. And I guess, you know, hashtag insane community is kind of long. So I don't have any problem with that. And I think it's uh, pretty festive too to it start out with insane rather than sane. And it makes it more fun. And uh, uh, the insane friends thing is, is great too because it implies we're all friends, which is, which is great. I go along with that too. It also goes along with our, our positivity of our communities. And so uh, whichever one y'all end up sticking with, I'll go along with too. For right now, we're predominantly using hashtag insane friends. And so you'll see that more and more on our videos um, from beginning to end. And even if all you do is put your name on your videos as a, as a watermark, that could really help, especially if, like if somebody takes your material and puts it on their own page or some of your material and puts it on your own page or your channel name use that as a uh, watermark so that if somebody sees your material somewhere else or somebody's using your material somewhere else at least you'll be getting some free name recognition advertising I think I said that earlier anyway okay then num step number 12 I write my verbal script which is what I use for well we're offline for a second Step number 12, I write my verbal script. I write it out, I type it out, I get it ready before I do any of my narration. And once I've written that verbal script and typed it up and everything, I have it ready for doing my verbal narration. Then I've got to set up my editor and put my mic in and everything and get ready to do the narration. And then I you know, I do go through the preparation of then the voice exercises. Uh, if I'm been having trouble with my voice that day, I might take a spoonful of honey, something like that, and then I get ready. And of course, there's a lot of times in between step number 11, number 12, I'll have to do research before I can write my verbal script. Now, you may not have to do that depending on your subject matter. Uh, but with my subject matter on the St. Auto page, I have to do a lot of research because my information needs to be accurate. Then once the narration is done, then I got to go back over the checklist and double check and make sure I've done everything and done everything right. And sometimes I might go through a couple of steps two or three times uh, to get things just right. And then I'm ready to start doing the usual channel things like the SEO work, which is a whole nother subject. But at that point, I've got a video that's ready to be saved as an MPEG-4 so that it can possibly be uploaded to YouTube. Mel Hell Mud Mowers, it's good to see you. And DSW Joyride Productions, hello. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. The, uh, the community support across quite a few communities. Yes, it has picked up. And I, I know I was on a live quite, it seems like a long, but it was really only a couple weeks ago that everything is going so quickly now with the gro communities growing so fast. Uh, we were on live together and we were talking about, I don't remember if I was on his live or he was on mine. Uh, head, heading back home from scan, all come back good. Yes, woohoo, that is awesome. You got your scan today. That is good. Good news, Mill Hill. Warren, I'm, I'm really happy. Thank you for letting us know. That is great news.
How often do you have to get your scans for your cancer stuff? No, my dad does every six months. Yes, uh, Warren and I were talking about this thing, thing about the community support across communities and stuff, and I likened it to each one of us has our channels, and we're like these fingers here, and we have all these channels are together, and we come together, we can make hands, and then we get more communities together, and it's like having a, a right arm, one community and another community is the left arm and then we can all just come together and work together and we're very strong that way when we were just individual channels and we were out there on our own without a community it's, it's it was like being a finger with no hand and then you get one community and you've got like these all these channels together you can make a hand or you can eat community gets strong enough it could be like an arm with a hand and fingers um, but then you get more than one community and you've got whole arms with hands and fingers and you can do a lot more you can achieve a lot more yes you go back in six months that's the same amount my dad does he does every six months it's probably a great idea to do it that often you don't want anything to get out of hand again it's got a little out of hand and he had to have some extensive surgery so and of course while we're on the subject let me give a shout out to the communities that's been most helpful to us uh, back before Hashtag I'm a creator community even existed. We had help from Mopar community. Um, then we were building our own same community, which here lately been, uh, noticed our audience is gravitating towards the hashtag insane friends and hashtag insane growth, the shorter um, hashtags, which I have no problem with. As a matter of fact, I like that. I think it's, it's festive. To have the insane part, and I think it's a great idea to have it shorter. Um, and the, of course, the the uh, the big, very helpful hashtag. I am a creator community, uh, full of so many people from so many different types of channels. So for his signal, so he's losing his signal. And DSW Joyride Productions wants us to know that he rocks the hashtag. I am a creator hashtag Mopar community. And hashtag same community on my videos when I comment on others' videos now. Thank you very much. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Great way to support. And I, I have seen that. I know that to be true. I have seen that. I saw that, and I thank you for that. I saw that earlier this morning. I spent two or three hours this morning on uh, replying to comments alone and of course going through uh, I had revealed earlier another checklist that I have on a different live here on Sane Enterprises where I go through my strategy on how to uh, deal with comments in both a reactive and a proactive way and I use Hi Wrestler Mania and I, I use the comments coming in as a trigger to trigger uh, both respond to those comments then go oh, my stream is offline for a second okay stream is back I use those comments coming in as a trigger to trigger my reaction where I reply to the comments then I click on their channel icon I go back to their channel I watch their latest video I comment on their latest video and then here lately a certain few of those when I have time some of those I've been and I got this idea from somebody else I also tweet some of those videos out on my Twitter but mostly 
at least on Sundays when we do our Sunday live and some of these other lives, I do something that I, I've got time to do right now. Might as well do right now. Uh, I'll go to the community tab here. Well, first, let me switch this where y'all can see. Yeah, that's it. Go to the community tab. And it's on subscribers right now because I was checking to make sure I'm subscribed to everybody. Go to comments. And then there's a there's quite a few more comments I haven't gotten to yet. See, a lot the people in this community are so great and giving and helpful and stuff. I go sometimes now. I have this wonderful problem that I'll go through two or three hours of replying to comments and stuff. And by the time I get done replying to comments, I got more problems, more comments, and that is a really good problem to have. That is such a wonderful problem to have. I, I think a great man once told me in, in some of these books that I've read over the years about business management and sales and stuff. One of these great men told me to not wish for to get into a position where you have no problems, but wish that you have better problems. Because you're always going to have problems. And right now, since we've been active in the communities, in the I am a creator community, the the uh, hashtag same community, the Mopar community, all these people that we've met in these communities have been so good to each other and us that we now have a lot better problems. <laughs> Problems like having so more comments than we can respond to. That is a really good problem to have. We have Joe Z here commenting on our videos. Differing likes. Terrific Toucan. Gladys Sabagal. Bjorn's Bags. Camaro Time. Gladys Sabagal. Gons Fam. Inject Jeffrey. Ross K. Fode, us living, us loving wonderlust, Demon Durango. I'll give you a guess of which community he's from. Uh, Blue Wizard Animations, and, and, and in case you don't know, that's Mopar community. The uh, Demon Durango, Auto Dreamer seventy seven, hashtag Popular Food, terrific toucan. Musky Hans, <laughs> Uzo Lu, Ross K. Fode, all wonderful members of the community and helpful and uh, over here commenting on the videos and the comments help. It's not just views or watch time, but comments also help stimulate the algorithm to get Okay, and the chats that I missed while I was doing shout outs to the comments, we've got people saying hello to each other. And DSW Joy Rides, uh, yes, the reply, then watch and comment. It's a great way to support and make sure you don't forget to resupport. Yes, yes, because that's a good point. Because sometimes you get back on somebody's channel if you're commenting back and forth back and forth you're also going back and forth to each other's channels when you're replying to those comments and if you see that YouTube has pulled your